Hello, friends. Today we have two disassembled batteries right in front of you. The 2023 model SX and the 2015 or 2016 model. Today we will take a very close, in-depth and extremely comprehensive look at what the latest generation of Tesla batteries looks like. Let's discuss in detail the various ways we can kill a Tesla battery, how to choose a car with an undamaged Tesla battery, and also which distinct types of Tesla battery is the most expensive thoroughly. So, if we look at the paperwork, these are practically identical batteries because the latest generation that came in this casing had almost 100 kilowatt hours. And the new generation of batteries is 100 kilowatt hours. The segment in the middle is 18650, meaning the same 18,650 battery. They are identical. The chemistry is slightly different, and they also differ greatly in appearance. And this is the specific and clear difference, the main point, and what distinguishes them from each other, and how they need to be chosen differently, and the different nuances you need to pay attention to when you buy one car or another from a particular year. Let's start with the old battery. Here they are, right in front of us. Here are the neat and compact little batteries. They have a bit of a coating on them due to the passage of time, and I will explain in detail which is why this battery is here exposed. It has no additional fire protection at all, as you can see, which we have right here. This particular battery is completely and securely sealed. And it is completely sealed not because we want it to look fresher, more beautiful, or because blue is the creator's favorite color, but because this fire suppression system is something short circuits here. Should foam up and provide additional protection against the entire battery catching fire. That means it is sealed, reducing the chance of moisture getting in, specifically to the contact, and decreasing the possibility of damaging the battery. As you can see, we have 16 segments in total there, and here we have only five in total. That is, five large blocks of this battery right here. And because we now have a fire suppression system here, Tesla thought that the casing could be made slightly thinner. And that's what they did. The casing of the new battery is a bit thinner than the casing of the old battery. They were very cautious with the old battery, and it was made very robustly. I promise to tell you which battery is indeed the most expensive. On top, we have the plate battery. Next, we have the Model 3 battery from the years 2021 to 2022. Next, we have the 100th SX battery. Then, the exact same battery as we saw before, exactly. And the very latest one is a battery from a car made at the Texas factory. This is a Model Y. We can tell by these brackets. The front seats. Why are there brackets on the battery? Because this car does not have an additional four. And similar to gasoline cars, the most expensive battery is the one that everyone needs. The new battery is not needed by anyone yet because these cars do not get into accidents very often. And secondly, because it was always produced with only one amount of kilowatt hours. It's a different story with the previous type of cars. This battery, the 100 kilowatt hours one fits cars from 2012, 60, 75, 85, 90. Any variations with one or two motors? You want the 100 kilowatt hour battery. We had a video where we installed the 100 kilowatt hour battery in a rear wheel drive car from 2013. And this was the car in the world with rear wheel drive and 100 kilowatt hour battery. 100 without the letter D. This battery is the priciest. Costs over $15,000 which is quite a lot. And our grade three batteries are the cheapest because no one really needs them. Threes don't break down. If so, they are often taken apart. The prices for different types of threes batteries start at $3,000. Therefore, we might have even slightly debunked the myth that the battery makes up most of the car's cost. The plate battery. It is also priced at around $15,000 on the market but in reality, no one needs it. So if you want a plate battery, I recommend you contact the seller and offer a more reasonable price because they definitely won't sell it anytime soon.
Most Tesla batteries are designed to last for a period of around 10 years, regardless of the amount of driving or the distance you cover with them. That is, even if you drive a lot, it will still last 10 years. It actually degrades a little more, and this little more is literally just a few tenths of a percent. So, if you initially have a 100% battery, after a couple of years you will have a battery at about 97%, and after 10 years of heavy use, it should still be more than 90%. Because both of these batteries have cooling systems, and that is literally the most important thing that sets them apart from your phone batteries. Because most of you compare batteries to phones, iPods, MacBooks, and so on. But the difference is that the batteries in iPods, MacBooks, and phones do not cool down. Because of this, the lithium deteriorates and dies. This might raise a question for the most attentive among you. So why are both of them disassembled? They are both disassembled because, essentially, the only way to harm them is to physically damage these batteries. They have very different fates and completely different reasons why these machines ended up here, but the story is essentially the same. This machine came to us because it was hit in this part, meaning there was a substantial impact. This particular machine was actually purchased by a dealer at an auction. So... What did we do here? We disassembled it, welded its casing, everything is welded. But since whoever damaged this battery somehow continued driving further, I don't think it'll last long, as there's also some corrosion. There is some corrosion on almost all the elements and components. We replaced approximately five brackets here. If you can recall, we never used to replace brackets until it was discovered that Tesla itself repairs these batteries. This surprised me quite a bit, and now we sometimes allow ourselves to repair batteries for external clients, to be honest, in our workshop on a regular basis. For our cars, we still don't repair batteries, we replace them entirely. And these percuts sell very well on the market. People use them in homes and so on. If you damaged the battery, if you got a crack in it, the impact was serious enough, meaning that when the battery was damaged, the wheel most likely came off as well. The wheel is put back in place, the battery was ignored, and the car was sent to auction. So once again, for those looking for a car at an auction, don't try to buy a car that's as intact as possible just with some slight scratches, and so on. There is definitely some catch in it, and indeed, this catch could potentially cost as much as the car itself. The next battery. This is a very recent story. A very recent battery. And it was damaged because the truck driver who was transporting the car to us, unfortunately, thought it was a good idea to place the car with its full weight on something sharp due to his negligence, which resulted in significant damage to the vehicle during the transportation process. The driver carefully loaded the item into the vehicle. The block fit snugly and securely into the battery compartment, ensuring a proper connection. So, he transported his suit on the battery. He just took it and placed it on the block. What we did, unlike the owner of the previous car, was not wait until the car stopped, not wait until it piled up a bunch of errors. We immediately disassembled the body, immediately fixed the hole, and now the car is ready for further operation. The most interesting thing is that the body is soft, and they made a fairly large gap here between the body and the briquette itself. Exactly, I think because they anticipated that the body would crumple, it would run into something, and it would be quite difficult to damage the segment itself. It's definitely a little bit more straightforward with these cars compared to the previous ones because here, the body is three to four millimeter steel, which is not so easy to damage. Well, I hope I shed some light on these myths regarding batteries, because a lot of people are currently looking for Tesla cars and asking very strange questions. For example, how many miles or kilometers does your dashboard currently show at this moment right now? 
This is, in fact, a strange question because it actually shows exactly how much you or the previous owner can approximately drive the car. That is, it is not a specific unchangeable number that pertains to the health of your battery. This is a figure calculated by the computer based on how you have been driving previously in the past. So, it's a strange question. And it's not an iPhone battery. Therefore, if one or two years have passed, this battery is in excellent condition. You just need to check the car's history. If it was hit, and the impact may have hit the bottom of the car, it needs to be inspected. So how can you kill the battery if you don't want to physically damage it? You should go to the track frequently and then constantly charge at a supercharger. Then go back to the track and charge at the supercharger again. The battery is prone to degrade because it won't have enough time to cool down properly. And what you might have noticed, I hope, is this cable that goes from the battery to the car. This allows us to repair batteries faster and deliver cars to you more quickly. And you can definitely find footage of this car moving its wheels with a standalone battery on our Instagram. The link is in the description. Subscribe to this channel. See you in the next very important videos for you. Bye.